Hi everyone, it's Ian from Q-Tips. Today I'm going to assess the relative accuracy of GPS's on two different Samsung Galaxy phones using the Q-Field app and then also the photographs uh, and the meta tags that get assigned to photographs when you turn on your location tags in the camera options. Uh, this question came about from a client of mine who wanted me to assess the relative accuracy of altitude for uh, handheld devices and uh, GPS um, applications on cell phones in particular. So today I'm going to do this slightly differently. This video is going to be quite a long video, but what I will do is set up a, a project for the Q field application, and then I will go into the field with those two separate phones and capture data. I'll uh, then come back to my desk and assess those results. So because it's a, a bit of a longer video, if you uh, get to a section that you're not interested in or you see a, a section that you might be interested in, have a look at the video description and I will include the chapters or timestamps. So you can just exclude and, and skip forward to the section that you are interested in. And that should, uh, should make the video a bit shorter for you if you are just looking to get to the information that you are interested in. And with that, let's get started. So to, to be able to assess the accuracy of my cell phone um, or two cell phones, I need to know the location data and altitude data for an exact point uh, on the Earth's surface. And in South Africa, we have uh, what they call trig beacons. And I am going to use trig beacons uh, to do this. So I'm going to go into the field and capture the Q field uh, feature for, for that trig beacon and then compare it to the, the trig data which is attached to those trigs. Okay, so what is a trig beacon? So let's just quickly do a little Google search and see if we, what we can find. So I'm just going to open up that. So trig, they're called trig beacons in South Africa. And here we go, we've got, so we need to actually download the trig beacons. So this is the site that I'm going to use, Trig Beacons. Okay, and from this site, there's uh, two download options, and I'm going to download the trigbeacon.zip. Now, I have already done this, but if you're also looking for the Trig Beacons, just click on the little, it's not really intuitive, it's a bit of an old web page, but if you want to download the, the zip file for the Trig Beacons, which are come through as KMLs, which you will then be able to open up in Google Earth, Google Earth Pro, then just click on this option to download the uh, yeah download those trig beacons. And just briefly, if we have a look at what a trig beacon is, just type in trigonometrical station should should return the Wikipedia description. So if we quickly have a look, a triangulation station, also known as a trigonometrical point and sometimes informally as a trig is a fixed surveying station used in geodetic surveying and other surveying projects in its vicinity. Okay, so that's a, a, a wiki description. So that's fair enough. Let's get on with that and we're going to open up Google Earth Pro and download that KML. And I've already done that. So what I'll do is add that KML to my project. So I'm going to go to File and Open, Downloads, and here it is here. So it's actually a KMZ. So the, the KMZ with a KML inside it, okay, that's fine. Okay, so there are actually quite a few trig beacons in my vicinity, but I've uh, predetermined that there are four that will work for me. And those are up here uh, on, a, on a ridge quite close to where I live. So I'm going to use the Constantia Neck, Cecilia, Bel Ombre, and Bel Ombre sub trig beacons. Um, so what I want to do is I need to, to package this in a Q field project that I can load onto my phone. So I'm going to export these KMZs or KMLs and then open them up in Q field and convert them into a geo package. So that's easy enough. I'm going to create a layer and I'll call it trig beacons okay and then I'll just put this folder just on top and then if I expand these trig beacons 
Those four are the ones I want. So I'm just going to drag those and drop them into the, uh, the Trig Beacon folder that I've just created. And if you have a look at the data that comes through, this is the data I need. I need the ortho height and then also the lat and longitude. So we've got our Trig Beacon number as well. So that's fine. This data will be useful to us. Just scroll up slightly. So I've got two, three, and four. I can minimize that. Okay, great. So now I just have those four. So I'm not going to pull through all of those trig beacons. I just want the four that are now in my new folder. So let's export those as a KML. So to do that, just right click on the folder I've just created. And actually, before I do this, I'm going to come back to this. But what I want to do is just set up a project folder on my desktop that I can copy data into. So let's do that quickly now. So I'm going to go folder and it's going to be called trig underscore beacon. Okay, that is going to be my parent folder. And I've used that underscore instead of a space because that's going to be important later because we do run some uh, some queries from the command line which does not like spaces. So inside this parent folder, I'm going to have a couple other folders like uh, data. And then inside data, this will be where I have my KML. Okay, my KML folder. So I'm going to copy the data out to that. But then I also want some other information or some other folders. So I want a folder for my project and my exports. So I'm going to export those projects to a Q field project. So export. And then when I come back to my desk at the end of my day in the field, I want an upload, an upload folder to upload those, those, uh, that data. And for the upload data, we're actually going to have uh, two folders for the, uh, actually, I don't need to, to put that in here yet. What I want to do instead is under export. So, so I'm going to have two phones for a Galaxy A5 and a Galaxy S21. And I want two export folders. So, so this is where I need those new folders. So we're going to go Galaxy S21. And, whoops. No, I didn't want to do that. A new folder called Galaxy A5. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so we can go back to Google Earth Pro. Right click on my folder that I created, save place as, and now I've got a place to put it. So it's not there, it's on my desktop, Trig Beacon Data KML, and it needs to be a KML, so make sure that it's not a KMZ, and then click save. And that's it, we're done with Google Earth Pro, we can close that down. So let's close that completely. I don't need those and open up QGIS. Okay, so QGIS has opened up and I'm going to start a completely blank project. And I'll start off by adding that KML that I've just exported. So I'll do that using the data source manager. And I need to select vector. And then just navigate to that folder that I've created. Desktop beacon and data KML. There it is there. Add and add layers and close. Okay, I see it comes through with a default symbology, which we can change later. Um, but before I do that, I actually want to convert this KML into a layer in a geo package. So I'm going to do that next. So I'm just going to right click on this layer and say export save feature as and then select the geo package option and go and create the geo package name. So I'm going to put it in the project folder and I'll just call it geo package. And this is the, the original trig beacon. So original underscore TB is as good a name as any, and I will be adding it to this project. So let's click okay. There it is there. So I'm just going to rename it quickly. Just remove the 
prefix of the, the geo package. And then this I'm not interested anymore, so I'm going to remove that layer and change the styling. So let's just open up the the layer styling options and what shall we choose for trig beacons? I think triangles are good shapes. So let's go with the, the red triangle for this trig beacon. And then also what we do we can do is we can label it. So I'm going to label it on the name that it came through on. So a single name, that's fine. Maybe just put a text buffer on it. That should work. Okay, so that works nicely. So the next thing I need to do is actually create the layer that I'm going to be capturing in the field, which will also be a point layer. And that is the one that we packaged with all the other data into the project that we can edit in the field. Okay, and I'll also need some background data so that will help me navigate and find these, these trig beacons. So I'm going to use the quick map services layers and we will use the Google hybrid layer as well as maybe turn on the OpenStreetMap Ortho Topo Map or the Open Topo Map. That might be useful. We'll turn that off for now. Okay, so with that satellite imagery as a backdrop, I should be able to navigate to these um, these trig beacons. Right, so now let's create that layer that we want to use to actually capture the new uh, trig beacons using QField. So we are going to click on this option to create a new geo package layer. And we need to select the geo package that we're going to import it into or save it into. And we've already created it uh, in the previous example. So we'll choose that one. And the name is going to be trig beacon. And we'll start out by creating a few fields here. So we are the, the one field we want is a, a unique identifying field. So that is uh, the UUID field, and that will have a, a length of 100. We can add that as our first field. Now that'll be our unique identifier. We will also have a name, and that can have uh, 50 characters, 50 characters type, uh, phone. Okay, so now we, we, I want a field to identify the phone that I'm using at the time. So we're going to have a field for phone. And then we're also comparing the meta tags from photographs. So I want to, uh, fields to capture photographs. We have photo one, and that can be 100 characters and photo two, that can be the same. And then the other data uh, to compare. So we are, we are going to have uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude. So latitude, which will be a decimal number. Longitude, which will be the same. Altitude, which can be a, a whole number. Yeah. And then the last thing we'll have is a date. And the date will be date and time. Okay, so there are our fields. We can, uh, we need to choose the geometry type, which is going to be a point. And then also the coordinate reference system. We're going to stick with this one here, EPSG 4326. WGS84. So that is that is the one we are going to use. And then we can click OK. Okay, so now if you if you have already created a geo package and you are adding a layer, um, just make sure you don't click on overwrite, because what that'll do is is basically overwrite the entire geo package and any layers that you have in that geo package will be nuked. So you don't want to do that. You want to add the new layer to an existing geo package. So we're going to click add new layer. And there we go. So now obviously you won't see anything yet because we haven't captured any features for this new layer. So what we'll do is we'll just also give it a symbol and we'll just choose the green triangle. And then we'll also label and we'll label using single labels on name. And 10 is fine, but we want to draw on the text buffer as well. 
So when we label in the when we capture a new feature in the field, it'll automatically be labeled. Okay, so that is pretty much good. Let's save this project. I want to save it, and I'll put it in the project folder, and we'll call it and we'll call it Trig Beacon. Okay, and I'm going to save it not as a zipped format version. I'm just going to have it as the QGS, which is the standard project file format, and then click Save. Okay, so we've we've everything set up. Now we just need to export this to QField, uh, and then load it onto our phones, and then go and capture the data in the field. Okay, so if you haven't if you haven't used QField before, you will need to activate it from your plugins uh, um, directory. So if you go to manage and install plugins and type in QField, you'll get the option to select QField Sync, you select that and install it, and you'll get a, a couple of new options. You'll get a, a new option on the plugins menu, and then you'll also get this little option here, this little, this little toolbar. Okay, so what we want to do is just open up and set up our project. So we're going to configure the current project. And I'm going to save this data onto my phone using a cable. So I'm going to do that. I want offline editing. Offline editing. That's fine. And in fact, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this, uh, this original underscore TB layer is not editable. So I need to go into the project settings and just change that. So we'll do that next. But otherwise, this is all fine. If you, if you wanted to change the, 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 the name the naming convention for your photographs you can go, you can do that under properties if you click on properties you can go in here and you should be able to edit the photographs ah I see it, it's not seeing these as photographs yet because i still need to set up the the form okay so my project is not quite ready but this is fine for now we'll leave that okay and we need to actually go in and, and set the form correctly for the trig beacon so that is a stage that we'll do now. Um, before we do that, I'll just uh, just make sure that I make sure that the original underscore TB layer is not editable. So if you go to Projects and under Properties, now there's an option under Data Sources to make it read only. So now that'll make sure that we can't edit that layer. So that's fine. And now we just need to make sure we we set the the form option. So if you if you if you select your layer and go to Properties. And then go to attribute form what we're going to do is we're going to create a form that allows data capture um, like a, a seamless data capture using QField. so to do that we're going to create a couple tabs and then uh, change a few settings for these fields so i'm going to use the drag drop designer to do that i'm going to remove the fid okay and we're going to start off with a unique identifier so now this is going to be unique for every field and i'm going to use a default value to actually calculate a unique code for each feature so that mustn't be editable and then the, the little command i use is uuid open and close parentheses okay and that'll do that that'll have, that'll work and then name name is all fine that's not going to be editable type type i want to select the value map option and and i want to identify if something is a trig whoops, is a trig beacon, so there's the value, but then this is the, this is the actual value that will be in the description, and then the other thing is a point of interest, so BOI, uh, point of interest, okay, and that is all fine, okay, so that's fine, and then phone. Phone will also be a, a value map. And that'll be for the two different phones. So we are going to use the, the A5. So Galaxy A, A5. And then the S21. Okay, so that value map will work nicely for us. Okay, and then the photographs need to be attachments. And I think this, because I hadn't selected this option, that's why when I was looking at it just now, 
it wasn't giving me the naming options for those images. So we'll choose the relative path and then just make sure it's on image and do the same for photo two. So the widget type is an attachment, relative paths and image. And then latitude is going to be a default value of dollar sign Y, which will return the latitude. Longitude is dollar sign X altitude and then the, and then the other thing we want to do is capture the altitude so i'm going to set the minimum value to zero i mean that's sea level and i'm not going to be going higher than a thousand meters so we can we can select this well let's set it to one one and a half thousand meters so that's that's the maximum value that will be allowed um okay that's perfect but now we also need a default value and to calculate the elevation or the altitude of the handheld device at the coordinate position. You need to type in Z for the elevation, and then it's at, and it's, pos uh, it's position, position coordinate. Okay, so, so the elevation at position coordinate, and that should be perfect, and then date as well. Okay, date, we're gonna have a default, now this is also, we can make that not editable. And then what will happen here is we'll just call in the date and time of the time that you capture each new feature using that default value. And that's it for all these uh, properties. The next thing I'll do is just create um, two separate tabs. So, so we've got some default values for latitude, longitude, altitude, and date, as well as UUID. And those can be seen as a, maybe meta, let's call it. So this is a new, a new tag or folder. Let's call it metadata. And we'll drag and drop all of those values into this new folder. So that'll be its own tab. And then we'll create another one and we'll call it trig info. Okay, and we'll drag all the other stuff into that one. Okay, I want my trig info tab to occur or to appear first. And then just put the UUID at the top. Let's have a look at all this. And that'll work perfectly. Okay, so now I'm happy. I'm going to save. I'm going to say apply. Okay. I'm going to save that project. And now if I go back to plugins and Qfield Sync configure current project, there now should be an option under trig beacon for the images. Okay, there we go. So now because I've saved them or set them as attachments, it's going to label them this way. So each new photograph will get this naming convention and you can edit and change this here. This DCIM is a folder that will be created. So you could call that images or photo. That's up to you how you change that. But I'm, I'm going to accept this default naming convention, which is suits me fine. Apply, okay. So now I just need to export it. Okay, so plugins, Qfield Sync package for Qfield. I don't have to worry about that. And now I just need to select the folder for it to be exported into. And it's on my desktop, Trig Beacon, the export folder. And we're going to export it twice. Once to the Galaxy A5 folder. And create that. It's quite a small project, so it exports quite quickly. Now I could just go back into, into Explorer and copy the data out and put it into the S21 folder because essentially those two projects are, are identical. But I'll just export it again. Except this time I'll choose a different folder. There we go. And let's just go have a look at those two folders. There's the data that's come through. So we've got the geo package that has been created as well as the, the project, the Qfield project, and the same for the Galaxy A5. Right, so all I need to do now is connect my phone to my computer using a USB cable and copy the data or this folder out into QGIS. So let's connect. So I've already got my Galaxy S21 connected. So I just need to make it available. So let's copy the S21 folder and I'll show you where you need to put it and it'll be the same for both devices so internal storage Android data 
and where is it? Q field, there it is there. OpenGIS Q field files, imported projects, and this folder is another project I've already got there, so I just want to paste it in there. There we go, and if we open up that folder, you'll see it's got the data. Perfect. Okay, so I just need to repeat that step for the Galaxy A5, and uh, I can go into the field, and we can start this exercise of capturing those trig beacons, and then we'll come back to the to the office again, and just compare the data and see what it looks like. Okay, so off to the field. Okay, so that's the mountain range that has the trig beacons on it. Just going to drive there to the parking lot at the top of Constantia Neck and then climb up there. So it's, uh, it's quite a hike, but it's actually quite a nice day, so it should be fun. Okay, so I've just arrived at the parking lot, and if we walk out just to the side here, we can see uh, the Constantia Neck. That is where the first trig beacon is, so I'm going to march up that, uh, or climb up that mountain there and then go and find the other ones as well, but that's where the first one is. So I'm going to start um, capture, I'm going to capture the parking lot using Q field, and that'll be our first point. Okay, here we go, so I'm going to open up Q field on both phones. I'll start with the S21, it's a local file and it's an imported project. Galaxy and Trig Beacon Q field. There we go, so we've opened that up. And I've currently got the position settings also displaying, which I can close. Uh, but there are my there are my four trig beacons. Now I might only do two of them. If I have time, I'll probably do three and you never know, maybe maybe all four. But let's get to the Constantia one, the Constantia neck one first. And uh, Q feels quite nice. Um, you can see the position of yourself. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'll show you how you can turn on your on and off your location data if necessary. If you tap and hold the little target, then it pops up with this little menu, and then you can um, turn off show position information. Did I do it there? Let's try that again. There we go, so it turns it off. So you don't have to have it, but it's quite it's quite nice to have if you want to see the elevation changes, etc. Tap and hold and turn that back on. And then we can start walking walking. And with the um the aerial photograph imagery, it's quite nice as a background because you can use it to navigate. So I'm going to use it to navigate and start walking towards that first trick beacon. There we go. I've got a little arrow as well, so it shows you which direction you're walking, which is quite nice. I'm going to start off by capturing the parking lot. So I'm going to open up my menu and then you'll see the little padlock next to original um, TB or trig beacon layer that's got a little padlock there. So that layer is not editable. Select trig beacon and then select the pencil to start editing. And I want to snap to my current location and then capture a new point. And if I have a look at metadata, you'll see that the elevation data as well as the latitude and longitude is already captured because that was automated. Let's give it a name. We'll just call it parking. And the type will be point of interest. And the phone is the S21. Okay, now I'm not worried about photographs. I'm not going to take any. I have had problems in the past with photographs. So what I sometimes do is, is save the point and then go back and edit it and then add the photographs. Now, let's just do it for this case. So we'll take a picture of the the view. There we go. So that's the first one. So that, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to accept it by checking the check option and then I'll capture it on my, my Galaxy A5 as well. Okay, the nice thing about using Q field is you can use it as a navigation tool as well. So we can see the direction we're walking in from our little arrow and then using the satellite Im imagery as a backdrop we can sort of follow the path that we're on which is great so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just going to use that to navigate to each of these trig beacons 
it's quite steep climbing up this little mountain here but a uh, great day to be out and uh, using Q-Fuel to navigate I'm keeping an eye on the elevation change and it's changing quite rapidly so this path we're, path we're going up and our trig beacon is just behind or on top of that little ridge or that little buttress so let's go and catch our first point okay one of the other things I wanted to do is just test the location data from the meta tags in photographs for both phones so as I'm walking up the mountain I'll just take a few photographs with each phone and then we'll extract the metadata and compare them as well um, so you can extract them to CSV using XF tools which which I've created tutorials on before but what you do need to do if you are going to use that location data from your photographs is turn it on in camera settings and I'll show you how to do that now okay so you're going to need to open up your your camera let's go find this first of all ah uh, where is it it's here somewhere okay there we go if you go to camera and then under the settings so that top top left option and then if you scroll you should see location tags okay so if you turn location tags on then it should record the uh, latitude longitude as well as uh, altitude as one of the meta tags and you can then extract that so yeah quite simple but um, yeah useful if you do do that turn on your location tags for your photographs okay so this is going quite well actually I'm, I'm quite impressed with um, using Qfield as a navigation tool I can see exactly where I am on the image and I would say I'm probably only out by about maybe two meters I'm standing in that um, parking lot at the moment and uh, yeah it's pretty good um, cell phone coverage is a bit of an issue up here so I see it's taken a while to refresh but other than that it's looking good so I just need to keep walking and I'll use Q just to sort of navigate my way up to that first trig beacon okay so I'm nearly there what a view so the trick beacon is just over the top of this little copy here that's the view pretty cool pretty windy so the audio might not be too good but let me show you what a trick beacon looks like okay so there you go, trig beacon. It just looks like a big steel tube with concrete in it. And hopefully the data that's been recorded for it is accurate and we can compare it to the Qfield data. Okay, so I'm standing right right on the trig beacon now. So we can start capturing it and it looks looks like Qfield's got it right, hey? I mean we pretty close that's pretty good okay let's capture our first point here all right so that's fine capture point and it's got a code 187 just type that in here 187 dash uh, C O E C C O and then a dash E K I beg your pardon E K okay that's the name done this is a trig beacon this is the Galaxy S21 and I'll take a photograph let's save that first so like I said I've had issues uh, on this phone not the other phone when I take a photograph sometimes it it takes me out of Qfield so I'm going to save this and then edit again so I'll just select it okay let's have a look at my metadata metadata is looking good so let's take these photographs so I'm taking a photograph so I, I need to edit, edit this feature so I click on that little a with a pencil 
so it allows me to edit again and I'm going to take a photograph uh, from the trig beacon so I'm practically standing on top of it uh, photograph from the trig beacon uh, let's just change the the aspect ratio let's just make it simple so there from the trig beacon okay fantastic and then I'm going to take one of the trig beacon so I'll just step away Great, I'm glad that didn't kick me out of Q-Field, so that's fantastic, I can save that. And that is my first uh, trig beacon captured, Now I'll do the same with the Galaxy A5. Okay, so while I'm here I thought I'd just do a little pan around. So, so that mountain range running that way runs towards Table Mountain, and then this is the valley into Hart Bay. Okay, that ocean is the Atlantic Ocean. So that's Hart Bay in front of us with the Atlantic Ocean behind it. Then this mountain range is the Constantiaberg mountain range. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of wine farms below me. That mountain range in the background is the Musenberg mountain range and the Stienberg just on the right there as well. Into False Bay and Musenberg, the southern suburbs of Cape Town, and then the Hottentot Hollands mountain range in the background. So, so that is the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean is behind us. And if we pan all the way around again, back to that mountain range taking us to Cape Town. Okay. It's quite a steep drop off here. Need to concentrate. Okay, so this is just a point of interest. Uh, it's a little wooden bridge and I must say I'm, I'm quite close to the cliff edge here so it's possible that these satellites uh, will have uh, trouble with my location. Let's capture a point and see. Photograph. Okay, let's hopefully can we hopefully we can save that. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, moving on. Okay, so this is a little uh, concrete road, which is on a very steep section. I know mean, the guys, the guys mountain bike up here. I don't know how they do it without stopping. It's crazy steep. Can't really see on this video, but whew, it is steep. It's a fairly well-known feature on this walk. Is this little iron bridge? The tiny gorge, I guess, that it crosses. It's just so the. Uh, the Cape Nature and the foresters could get up here without too much difficulty. Anyway, I think I'll capture this as a as a point of interest as well. So that trig beacon is just just behind me actually. It's a turn in the road here. Like a hairpin. So there's this hairpin. And uh, I guess the trig beacon's up there. I kind of I've got to get up there somehow. So I oh, mean, it's easy enough. I've got uh, I've got um, Q field with the satellite imagery, so I should be able to find that path, no problem. Okay, so there it is. It's actually behind me. I've, but I've, there's a path that goes up there, so I've got to sort of walk backwards towards that path. But there it is over there. All right, so I'm nearly there. I'm not even sure there's actually a path that goes to it. 
Okay, so if there's a path to this trick beacon, I have not found it. So I am ba bashing my way through the bush here. <laughs> I've just got to make sure I do not stand on an unfriendly. And there might be a few out here because we were we on the last day of winter here. The sun is out, it's nice and warm. And there might be a couple of snakies sunning themselves on the rocks. Or, hey, this looks like it could be a path, but it could be an animal path on the rocks or um, in between the grass. So, this is not ideal, but uh, I'll get there slowly. Just got to make sure I make lots of noise so any of the slow snakes can get away before I get there. This is quite a view right on top here panning around right across False Bay and the Cape Flats and the back of Table Mountain. Hey, nearly there. Now this, uh, this trick beacon looks like it's got, it's different to the other ones. This is what I expect them to look like. They've kind of got this, what I would imagine, look, I don't know what it is, but maybe like a, a radar reflector on top of it. So the other ones are either knocked off or they never put one on. So um, yeah, so so that's interesting. Anyway, let's go capture this point. Okay, once again, um, Q Field looks like we're fairly accurate up here. You know, that's not bad. And um, I don't know if you know how satellites work. Maybe I'll explain it. But basically, the accuracy of your uh, location often de is determined by the position of the satellites. Um, you know, satellites, each satellite has an atomic clock and uh, your GPS receiver on your cell phone uh, using the atomic clock, the signal from the atomic clock which travels at the speed of light uh, it'll determine how long it takes for that signal to get to you from the satellite and then calculates how far you are from that satellite and so with a number of satellites up in the above you um, uh, you can calculate how far you are from each of those satellites and it puts you on the, 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 the sphere, the surface of a sphere around each of those satellites and then where each of those spheres intersect each other that is your position so it's, it's like a cocked hat, a navigation term cocked hat, you form a cocked hat and then you are at that location so I think you need a minimum of four satellites and uh, it's preferable if the satellites are distributed or dispersed um, quite far away from each other not all above you are, or all on the horizon um, but then you can get a fairly good reading so that is one of the reasons why you might get a different accuracy uh, on different times of the day or on different dates is because those satellites are moving constantly so they're not always in the same place so you know that 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 distance to each of those different satellites can move so that's where you can get um, discrepancies creeping in okay so that's how that that kind of works anyway let's capture this first point here so it's uh, well this is our second second trig beacon at least so yeah we want to capture our actual point and then this one's name is uh, looks like it's 115 and then it's a dash M C E C E dash and that is I A. Okay, so that's the name. It's a trick beacon. This is the S20. And I'm going to save this and then start again. So, like I said, I, sometimes uh, with this particular phone, it, uh, it kicks me out. So, that's why I'm capturing the photographs separately. All right, so now photograph from the trick beacon. Let's put that on its side. Maybe go for a, a full view. Okay, that's from the trig beacon. And then one of the actual trig beacons. So let's uh, put this back to our normal one to one ratio. And then just stand back slightly uh, where am I going to stand I'll find a stable rock to stand on
Right, perfect, I'm happy with that. Uh, just repeat those steps with the Galaxy A5. Okay, so I haven't stood on a snake yet, which is a probably good luck. And there are two more trig beacons, but I am quite happy with these two that I've already captured. So I'm going to go back and compare the data from Qfield to these uh, trig beacons that I've captured. The other two are quite a long way, and I also they're also not too close to the path, so it would involve a bit more bundu bashing, which I'm not that keen on. And I'm quite happy with the the data I've captured so far. So I'm going to go back uh, to my desk, which I'm actually not too excited about. And um, yeah, let's go and compare it and finish up this rather long video. Okay, so I'm back at my desk. And um, first thing I actually notice when I look at my screensaver, or my wallpaper at least, is this is exactly where I went. And I can you can just sort of see the trig beacon. That's the Constantia neck trig beacon kind of sticking up there, which is it's quite funny. I hadn't noticed that before. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to, to get that those folders off the phone now with the new newly captured data and put them into our uploads folder. So I'm going to start off by, uh, let's open up, the Explorer and then just plug my phone in. So I'm going to start with the Galaxy S21 and just make sure that it's uh, unlocked so that I can access those folders. There we go. So I'm going to go to, let's just make that, put this up here, put this down there. So I need to go to the Android folder, data, and it is QField1. There we go. Files and the imported project. So now this is the newly captured data will be in here. So I'm going to copy that and then go to the uploads folder and paste it in there. And I'll do the same with the other phone. So let's unplug the S21. Just unlock my Galaxy A5 and plug that in. Uh, where is it? There it is. And do the same thing. Go to that same folder. Same folder, different phone. Um, where is it? There it is. Files, imported projects, Galaxy A5. Copy that. And okay, I don't have that other window open, so I'll just go straight back to Trick Beacons, upload, and then paste it in there. Perfect. Okay. So let's quickly have a look at what's in there. If we open up the Galaxy A5 folder, you'll see it's got the data as it was exported, slightly bigger because there's now features captured, but then also it, it has the, the DCIM folder with the imagery. Okay, so all the images that were taken in the field are, are over here. Okay, so we, we just need to synchronize that in QGIS. So we'll do that next. So let's go back to our QGIS project. Okay, so back to QGIS. Okay, so the original project just has the original trig beacon data that we downloaded from KMLs, and nothing in our nothing in our um, attribute table or no records yet, as nothing's been captured. So we need to synchronize the those two folders into this project to to populate this layer with those features that have been captured. And quickly, if I just go back to the project folder before I synchronize, I just want to show you something. If you look at the project folder, you'll see it's just got the geo package and then the, the, the trig beacon um, project as well as the little backup file, but it doesn't have a DCIM folder yet. That DCIM folder will be created when we synchronize. And it's quite clever because what it'll do is if there's a DCIM folder and you synchronize, it'll, it'll copy those images across into that folder each time you synchronize. So if you synchronize from two separate folders, it won't overwrite anything. It'll just uh, keep populating these images into that new folder that it will create in that project folder. And while we're here, actually, let's quickly have a look at the, the meta tags, just to make sure that it came through. If we look at this trig beacon, we right click and we go to properties. Let's drag that across over here. We've got a details tag or tab if we scroll down looking at this metadata there should be a section for the location data and there it is gps so now that is because we turned on the location data if we hadn't 
you wouldn't be able to see the latitude, longitude, and altitude. So this is, we're going to use this later. We're going to extract it using XF tools. But for now, I'm just happy to, to see that it is there. And we can continue and synchronize our project. Okay, so this is quite a simple process. What we need to do is click on the synchronize from Q field option. Okay, and then go and select the folder that has the data we want to synchronize. So we just need to navigate to it. So I'm going to go to desktop, trick beacon and upload. And let's start with the S21. So we select that folder and then click synchronize. And you'll see what happens. It populates it with data. And if we open up the attribute table, I'll just make sure I choose the, the, the attribute table without selections. You'll see we've got the data that come that comes through and this is all the Galaxy S21 um, detail from that phone and I see it's got a weird record here with no data in it so I'm just going to remove that I'm not sure why that happened just remove that it's not important to us and save that again okay so there we go so now we've got um, data from the Galaxy S21 now if we repeat that step for the Galaxy A5 it'll just add add those records so let's do that so we'll click on the Synchronize option. Just make sure we choose the Galaxy A5 folder. Select feature and synchronize. And you may have noticed, okay, so we've got two names, but what's happened there is it's there's two records on top of each other. If we expand it, we see the Galaxy A5 data as it's come through. So that's perfect. That is what we expect to see. And then lastly, just go back quickly to the the project folder and see that it has now created that folder for DCIM which is our images folder and if we open it up there are or there are our images so it's working happy with that okay so now we should be able to compare the two phones and the data that has been captured from them so what I'm going to do is just so that I can distinguish between the Galaxy S21 and Galaxy A5 is I'm just going to style them slightly differently so for trig beacon i want to use categorized option and then i'm going to style on phone i'll change the symbol actually i'll just i'll just assign the symbols once i've classified it i click classify so we've got the a5 okay i don't need all other values the galaxy a5 let's make a a green circle or a green dot and then we can make the galaxy s21 a different dot so what shall we make that one maybe pink pink okay here we go okay so uh, you can't really see the pink ones and that's because a lot of these points are right and they should be they should be right on top of each other if our phones were were capturing the data 100% um, accurately they would all be directly on top of each other um, so let's compare this data now so this is this is that first trick beacon that I went to and if you have a look I mean that looks pretty good that that accuracy or the the error between the actual trig beacon which we are um, taking as the point because it's a trig beacon and then our two phones that's looking good so the the s21 is closer than the galaxy a5 and if we actually we can actually measure that distance so we'll use our snapping tools to start snapping options and we want to snap to all these features and then we'll use our little measuring tool and we will snap from the trig beacon so from the trig beacon to the the data from the galaxy s21 is 344 millimeters which is pretty close and then to the other phone the galaxy a5 is uh 600 millimeters so that so that really is quite good i mean if we, if we look at the the lat long error it's it's really marginal and i don't know too many consultants unless they're actually surveyors uh, or engineers who would be upset with that you know that that error is not too bad considering we're using a handhold or a, a cell phone at least but my concern has always been the elevation data so what i want to do is i'm just going to quickly create a little table so that we can type out the relative values for the altitude so i'm going to go back into my my uh, folders and i'm just going to create a little 
Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. And call it altitude. And just open that up. And let's just go, we'll go point, and then we're going to go, so trig, so this is the altitudes, it's going to go uh, trig, we'll go A, A5 and S21. Okay, so the first point, let's just make this slightly smaller and drag it across, drag it across over there, close that down now. So I'm going to minimize this and drag it off so that it doesn't cover the entire screen. So now we can be able to, at least we can see our Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay, so the first point, this was uh, Constantia Neck. Okay, for Constantia Neck Trig Beacon. <clears throat> okay, so now what is the elevation? So let's select the Trig Beacons, make that the active layer. And then if we click on that and we hover over the description. So see how it's come through here. This looks like HTML notation, um, which sort of maybe has created a table. But anyway, if you hover over description, if we look at ortho height, it's got 422.4 meters above sea level. 422.4. And how about the, the Galaxy A5? So we'll, we'll make the trig beacon the active layer. 449. And then what about the Galaxy S21? 454. Okay, so there's actually quite a big, there's quite a big error there. You know, there's a, a difference of more than 20 or 25 meters um, at, at a best case scenario. So the what's interesting to see is that the, the two phones have got uh, quite similar figures. Look, six meters is still out. But um, so you wouldn't use this if you were an engineer and you were trying to work out hydraulic uh, gradients and things like that. You know, it's, it's not ideal. Um, but uh, at least they are close but they are nowhere near the actual trig beacon. Now, now I'm not entirely sure why that is. I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a reason for it. Um, but GPSs, uh, I've always known, are notorious for not being great on, on altitude. Now, I'm pretty sure you do get um, GPSs that are, are very expensive that the surveyors use that do have accurate altitude data. And they probably, I think they do in-field corrections um, using satellites and then data that you load onto them. Um, but you know we're using handheld cell phones here, so so we can expect some kind of error, and that's that looks like uh, what we're going to get. So let's have a look at a couple of the other points and just see if that um, that error is repeated. So we'll go to we'll go to uh, Cecilia. We'll first have a look at the. The location error, okay, we'll do the same thing with our little measure tool. We'll snap to Cecilia. And the Galaxy S21 is closer again, but only by, but this time it's not It's not 300 mils, it's um, 1.3 meters, as opposed to the A25, the A5 at least, and 2 point, yeah, so we've got 2.3 and 2.3 and a half, so it's, it's out by like a meter and 50 mils or whatever it is. Uh, so, but it is out uh, by a little bit more, but still, I mean, it's not sub meter in this instance, but the accuracy is still acceptable for many consultants that I've worked with. Okay, how about the elevation? We use our identify tool. We'll see what the Cecilia trig beacon should be. Let's just hover there 696.8. Cecilia, how about the Q field? 734, the Galaxy AS21. So once again, that's, that's, that's even more out. That's out by 33.2 30, meters. Not ideal. How about the A5? 732. 
Wow. Okay. So consistent uh, with each other, but not with the trig. Um, and out by a little more, like a little extra 10 meters out. Okay. So that's, that's not ideal. So I think this has been pretty worthwhile exercise. Um, you know, if we stopped it right here, at least we know that there are issues with uh, elevation data from these handheld devices using Qfield. Um, but what we need to do maybe next is is compare it to, yeah, compare it to the meta tags on the photographs that were just taken separately. Uh, let's have a look first of all. If we just have a look at some of the images, just to see that if images came through from from that data capture. If we open up the the attribute table and then look at the tags. Well, the images came through so that that's working nicely other other than other than otherwise it seems to be working pretty well photographs have all been attached which is great so the synchronizing has worked quite nicely let's have a look at this this dam i think this is quite a nice photo let's have a look at this one okay that's interesting and this one too Okay, but what about the um, what about the elevation data? So let's let's do something differently this time. We're, we're going to I'm just going to zoom out slightly. If I select those two points, and then open up the attribute table, and if I just want to see the the show selected features, we can see that the difference in altitude is seven meters here. I quite like to use the uh, form view as well. If we choose the meta tag, and you can see that the the, uh, the text isn't uh, fulfilled here because I've changed the size of my my display size so that this video would be slightly bigger. So that's why that isn't shown through. Okay, so that's another way to to have a look at at images and uh, data. Okay, so that one is out by by seven. Let's go to the iron. Should we go to the switchback? Let's try the switchback. Okay, same thing again. Oh, we don't want to select all of those. Let's just select that again and then just go to selected features. Okay, and the metadata 608 and 605. Okay, so that difference is three. So it looks to me like the uh, the elevation difference between the two phones is quite consistent, and that's quite uh, worthwhile knowing. If you if you are going to send a team of people into the field, and they do have different devices, it's it's worth knowing that in this example, if they were using Galaxy A5s and Galaxy S21s, that the the error or difference between the elevations would be uh, minimal, to say the least which is uh, pretty useful to know. Okay, so suspicions confirmed on the elevation data not being great for handheld devices, worthwhile knowing. Um, but what I wanted to do is also just compare or check the, the photographs taken, the meta tag data. So what we can do, um, and, and I'm going to use XIF tools to extract the metadata from these images. And if you want to know how to use EXIF tools, I, I have created tutorials on this before. So just, just scroll back a few, well, you know, <laughs> navigate through my YouTube videos and you should be able to find one on EXIF tools. Um, but I'm going to use EXIF tools to extract the data so we can also compare the, the elevation changes and see if it's consistent with all the photographs we took. So if we, if we do that, we can use EXIF tools to extract data for all of the tool, all of the photographs in um, the projects DCIM folder because this is where everything was synchronized to so we've got the the um, the S the S uh, S21 as well as the A5 photographs here so we can so we can compare those okay so let's do that using yeah you know, let's do that using EXIF tools so what I'm going to do is I'll go to the folder that I want to run EXIF tools in I'm going to copy out, and this is why I've got the the um, no spaces. Okay, now this is I'm going to run the command line. So when I created this parent folder initially, that's why there's no space. So I'm going to copy that address, and I'm just going to type in here cmd, which will take me will open the command line specifically for that 
that folder. Okay, so it's taken us directly there. And now we can run XF tools. I'll just make this a little bigger. In fact, this is maybe I'll make this even bigger. So if we just minimize this and go to let's see if display settings will allow me to make this even bigger than I think I've currently got it set at one. 125% if I go to 150 that's quite a bit bigger okay now we can see what's happening okay so we're going to run XF tools XF tool and I want to extract the file name I want to extract the, the phone which is model I believe the, the GPS if we want to uh, add the CSV to our QGIS project, we need the longitude and latitude data. So I need to get a little minus there. Latitude, elevation data as well. GPS, GPS altitude. Okay, so that those are the only um <clears throat> fields or meta tags that i will extract but then i want it in a in a i'm going to create a csv and i want it in tabular i want it in table format and then i also want the decimal degrees when it comes through um well the 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 lat long values to come through in decimal degrees so that's what that little n is for and then we are going to put it in that folder and then we just need to name the CSV. Okay, and barring any typos, that should work. So let's run that. Okay, there we go. So that seems to be successful. If we just go back to our, our folder, there we go. So there's the coordinate CSV that's just been created. Let me open that up. Just expand this. Okay, so it extracted the model name so that is what we wanted to see uh, these two I'm just going to remove they're not important now the, the 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 model the reason I extracted the model is so I could tell the difference between the phones the SM-A5 that's obviously the A5 and then there's also the uh, the S21 okay so what we can do is we can load the CSV and color it up and then we'll have a look and see if that altitude difference is uh, consistent. Okay, so let's do that. Save that. Let's just save that. Yes, I want to save that. Minimize that. That I'm finished with, so I can close it. I'm just going to change my display settings back to 125. And then open up QGIS again. Important. I'll close that one down. All right, so let's turn that off and that we can turn off as well. And I'm going to use the data source manager to add that CSV. So let's go find it. It is in, that's it. Correct. So it's in that project uh, folder. Open. Okay, so it's already preempting which uh, geometry fields to use. The X field is longitude. So that's correct. Everything looks good. Let's add and close. Okay, what I'll do is just color them up differently so we can see the difference between the different phones. So let's start off by uh, what should we use? Uh, diamonds. Let's make this quite a bit bigger though. We'll make that six. Okay, that's fine. But actually, no, we want to categorize. Okay, so that's fine. So we're going to categorize on the model, classify. Uh, let's remove that one okay we've got some random colors here so maybe i'm going to choose red and uh red and green that's fine okay so red and green that is the a5 
Perfect. Okay, so we know the green is the S21 and the red is the A5. And if we do the same thing that we did previously, what, what we'll do is we'll just select features and then have a look at the attribute table. Like I say, difference here of 10 meters. So that is that is quite a big difference compared to what we saw earlier. I think the biggest difference we saw earlier was maybe only 6 meters. How about these two? Well, that's a difference of one meter. Meter. How about this one? There's a whole bunch there. So there's obviously a, a, a number of photographs that were taken in that area. That is the same photo. So that that one's been repeated. It's pulled that through twice. Okay, but the difference between the S twenty one here. That is very similar. It's like six six meters, six to five meters out. So it looks to me like these these differences are being repeated. So it's a consistent difference between the phones being pulled through from those images. So so if, I would say that the the the, the phone uh, using Q field <clears throat> and then the tags being created from the GPS are identical. So it's using it's using the same procedure or the same data that's coming through, which is what you'd expect or what you'd hope. Okay. Okay, so I think that's been a worthwhile exercise. What, what do you think? I mean, um, being, being able to know that uh, GPS uh, cell phones or using Q field, that the latitude data can be sub-meter in some instances and is only maybe two or three meters out in other instances is, is actually quite encouraging. But then also knowing that the altitude data can be quite far out. And uh, I'll be able to go back to my client now and tell them that uh, if the engineers are going to be using their phones to determine elevation data, they're going to need to pay uh, attention to those errors. Okay, so that's it. Um, I hope that's been a worthwhile and enjoyable tutorial uh, or video, slightly different to what I usually do. Um, yeah, anyway, till the next one. Cheers.